Hello, this fourth video is on measurement and error. These may be things that you learned in middle school, but it's always good to see what your high school teachers are expecting from you in that same area. The essential question is how do we measure different variables? How do we record our data? And how can we estimate the error in the measurements that we take? You should be aware that we're gonna be evaluating this over the course of the year whenever you do labs. Uh, specifically whenever you do your lab experimentation projects. We want to make sure that you can take accurate measurements, record data in a table, including their units, and estimate the error. So the four variables you've been introduced to in this unit are time, distance, velocity, and acceleration. I want to talk a little bit about what tools we're going to use to measure those things um, so that when we run experiments with them, you know how to take that data. Time will typ typically be measured using a stopwatch or your handy dandy phone, or sometimes a scientific tool called a photo gate, which is kind of like a stopwatch connected to the computer that can take really accurate data. Measuring distance will usually be done with a meter stick, but you may use a ruler, a tape measure, measure. there are laser distance measurers, um, and sometimes you even use photographs to find the distance of um, distance across different objects, like for example, that picture on the right. Velocity and acceleration are trickier to measure directly because usually you measure um, the distance and the time using, using the tools shown above and then calculate them. But there is one tool that you can use to make those measurements um, directly, which is called a motion detector. And we'll be using those a little bit later on in this class. So whenever you run an experiment, it's very important to set up a data table so that we can keep track of our data. This is an example data table for some kind of um, event where you are measuring the amount of time it takes for something to go um, a certain distance. Things to include in your data table. First, column labels. So make sure that you label every column across your data table so we know what it is. Second the units so we know whether your distance measures are in centimeters or meters and the same would be for the other columns the third is that your data table should have enough data points to be able to see a trend usually we'd expect at least five data points so if we're trying to find a relationship between distance and time we want to do at least five different distances so that we can see what happens to the time as that distance changes you also want to have repeated data points, um, which means that you don't take just one measurement at a certain distance, but you take two or three or four to be able to see how much error um, you've got in your measurements. This is especially important for tricky measurements or variables that are hard to measure. You'll notice, for example, in the measurements that I have circled up there, one of those data points is a big outlier because the first two times it only took 7.3 seconds to go three meters and the third time somehow we got 174.5 so this is why we take a lot of data because you can immediately identify that something went wrong on that third data point and then when it comes to coming up with your average you might not choose to include it one thing you probably didn't do a whole lot of in middle school was um, estimating errors and calculating the amount of uncertainty that results from errors in your experiment. Mm -hmm. The way that I would expect you to do this is to um, think about each variable that you um, took for your data table, list all the specific things that could cause measurements to differ from each other or from the actual correct value. Um, and these have to be really specific. I think that what I often see is people saying, quote unquote, human error or measurement error, those things um, don't work for me in high school. They don't tell me specifically what you could have got, done wrong. Some of your errors might be things caused by a human, but you need to be very specific about what they are. And then most importantly is to estimate the amount, the total amount of uncertainty um, that your errors have caused in the data that you've taken. And that will be a number and it will have units. Let's go through a quick sample error analysis for the distance data that we had in that original table. We had five dif different distance readings and we recorded them as exact number of meters, but it's not very likely that we were perfect when we measured those distances. So you should consider some likely sources of error. 
For example, perhaps the meter stick itself was too long or too short. Maybe we didn't actually start at exactly the right spot every single time we measured that distance. And maybe the person wasn't perfectly precise when they took that data. It's hard to see exactly where in the meter stick certain things fall. So when you want to come up with a value for your total uncertainty, you want to think about all of the likely sources of error and how big or small each one is. And then you're going to add up the error for each one of those things. And that gives you a total amount of uncertainty or the total amount of meters that we expect our data might be off by. In this case, I would say the meter stick being too long or too short, it's probably not too long or too short by a lot. So maybe 0 0.001 meter. Um, I think that the chances of me not starting at the right spot are, you know, I might be off by uh, five centimeters, so that's 0.05 meters. And it's hard to take a data on that meter stick um, more accurately than one centimeter. So I would say that's another 0.01 meter. When you add all three of those together, you get a total uncertainty of 0.0511 meters, um, which means these distance values from my table are probably plus or minus 0.05 one one meters, just over five centimeters off. So to summarize the slide, please revisit your essential question, which is how do we measure variables? How do we record our data? And how do we estimate the error in our measurements? Thank you.